The Shinigami, or Death God of the Naruto series, is a concept that we never did quite get to see much of during the series. So today's video asks the question, what would happen if Naruto was half Reaper? Enjoy. Hey Ross, sauce it up. Sorry, Kushina. I have to do this for the sake of the village. Minato uses the Death Reaper seal and proceeds to seal the Nine Tails into his son, Naruto. But something changes. It's as if the Reaper that he had summoned acted upon his own accord. And as he would finish sealing half of the Nine Tails, the Reaper would seal part of itself within Naruto. When this happens, Naruto's hair would go from a blonde from the roots to now dark as it would spread out through Naruto's hair. And from here, Naruto's entire presence, his aura would change. Minato would look back to see the Reaper with a smile. As before he can even react, the Ninetales comes in and pierces both himself and Kushina. With her telling the young baby Naruto everything she possibly could. As Minato watched all of this go down, he simply wondered what happened, but his life was fading from him and he couldn't react, he couldn't do a thing. From here, we have a four year time skip to when Naruto was a little bit older, after he was exposed for being the Nine Tails in Chiriki by Danzo. But around this time, Naruto's latent abilities would begin manifesting, and it would even have an impact on the Nine Tails itself. Naruto growing up would actually see spirits that would roam around his area of existence, and this would make Naruto grow paranoid, wondering to himself if anybody else could see things. People at this point would begin calling Naruto even more of a demon and a freak, until Naruto just stopped caring. Eventually, he learns to live with it, and one day, when Naruto would be sleeping, he would have a dream of a Shinigami, a death god, as it would speak to him, telling him to be his reaper, to use his powers well, and to feed upon souls. Naruto would wake up in a cold sweat, but wouldn't have anybody to turn to. He's alone. He's a freak. Eventually, Naruto would enter the academy, where he would notice he has a hard time using chakra and would get overwhelmed by everything. He is for now a way more troubled kid to the point where this version of Naruto is semi-jaded, but he has to deal with all of his problems alone. However, one day, in his first year of the academy, one random Chunin whose parents had been killed by the fox would decide that this is the day he will get revenge and finally kill that weird freak, Naruto. He would begin chasing him into a remote area of the village where he would corner the, Na the young Naruto and tell him that today he dies for the death of his mother. He raises his blade to the sky and as, as all of this is happening, Naruto just looks at the blade, accepting his fate, wishing the afterlife would be better for him. But suddenly, something snaps, as inside Naruto, something strange happens. Naruto was able to dodge at insanely high speeds as he would leap back into the air and summon a scythe from out of nowhere in front of him that he would use to then leap at the ninja and stab him with, as he would then have an ominous laugh go off, as he would then begin to suck the soul out of the very shinobi that attacked him. And Naruto would be like, what? What, what happened? As Naruto would regain consciousness thinking back to what he had just done. Having a flashback appear in his mind thinking, I, I did that? What? W when? But Naruto would suddenly say, I, I, I didn't do that. When out of nowhere, a voice would say, you didn't. We did that. As Naruto freaks out asking, who, who's there? Wh wh who was that? He would simply back up into the corner with like holding the, the kunai that he had in his hand and the sight that is now there as he's just like, who's there? But then suddenly the reaper would manifest itself into the real world as it would explain that he is a part of him, intertwined with his very soul, saying that the older and stronger that he becomes, the more access to the Shinigami's powers he'll have. With Naruto being shocked thinking, 
was it a dream? As for some reason, killing that Chunin, for some strange reason it gave him access to his abilities and battle knowledge that that Chunin had acquired over the years. Naruto after this incident would decide that maybe he'll be respected by gaining power. And so, for the next two years, after having these realization come to him that he has Shinigami powers, he would begin training these abilities to the extent, taking souls from unlucky villagers who would cross his path, and Naruto would grow his power more and more as the days go by, with Naruto becoming far more cocky and having the powers of a death god at his side as well, uh, becoming more introverted, less caring about the world, simply seeking power. Eventually, the day of the final would arrive with Naruto easily acing it and simply disregarding anybody around him. Something, however, would catch his attention when he was sitting down writing some notes on his paper. He overhears Mizuki lying to a student about a secret portion of the final exam. And so, Naruto would decide to step in and meet Mi Mizuki in the forest. When this would happen, Naruto would jump from tree branch to tree branch, being absolutely silent, with Mizuki simply waiting for the kid to bring back the, uh, the scroll of ceiling. He would suddenly hear a tree branch crackle, as Mizuki is on guard and he looks behind himself saying, Who's there? But nothing. It's as if whoever was there had teleported out of its sight. Mizuki would go back to thinking, it's probably just a bird or something. But suddenly, he would get kicked from the back and sent crashing into the ground where Mizuki would take out his demon wind shuriken from his back and say, I'm warning you, I'll kill you if you get in my way. And suddenly, Naruto would appear before Mizuki with a hood on, a black hood on. As Mizuki would say, Naruto, it's just you. What are you doing here? Aren't you supposed to be home by now? It's late. Go back. Leave. And Naruto would say, Mizuki, Mizuki, Mizuki. How wrong you are to think my tuning instructor would try to betray the village and take the scroll of sealing for himself. You always were pathetic. As from here, he begins taking steps closer to Mizuki, who at this point takes out a kunai and rushes at Naruto's direction. But Naruto would meet him by slapping the kunai straight out of Mizuki's hands and then gut punching him, sending Mizuki back as he coughs out blood in the process. And Mizuki would say, what the hell? But suddenly, Naruto would just have this creepy expression on his face as he summons a scythe before him and Mizuki would say, what? what is that? But Naruto would just proceed to stab into Mizuki's chest with it as his literal soul would come out of his mouth and would feed itself into the scythe. As Naruto looks towards Mizuki's direction, he then says, good, at least you're worthy of something. You raise my power by... 1%. Something is something, I guess. He would simply wait there as the kid would finally arrive with a scroll of ceiling. And Naruto would look at him as he would say, It's a shame. You actually did it. He would walk towards the kid with a smile on his face before suddenly holding him by the throat and sucking a soul straight out of his body. Before saying, I'll take that. The kid would fall limp to the ground with his body becoming pale and white. As Naruto would begin reading the scroll of ceiling, seeing a bunch of jutsus. One called the reanimation jutsu. Another, the flying raijin. More, uh, the shadow clone jutsu. And a bunch more other than that. He would also see something by the name of Rasengan. And so, Naruto would decide to take out his very own scroll and write down all of these jutsus on it. As Naruto would then proceed to run back to the Hokage's office and place the scroll of ceiling back without anybody noticing what had happened. Naruto discards the bodies far away, burying them in a place where they would never be found. And Naruto would appear in the academy the very next day, simply waiting for his finals uh, score to be announced, with Naruto actually being named the Rookie of the Year. Sasuke scoffs at this mention, saying that he should have gotten that. And when Sakura hears this, she gets up out of her seat as she points her finger right into Naruto's face saying, He doesn't deserve to be the rookie of the year! My Sasuke-kun! But before she could finish her sentence, Naruto would look at her and give her this stare of like, If you don't move your finger, I'm going to kill you. And Sakura feeling this presence come off of Naruto, she would quickly back up for sitting down and not saying a single word. Following this, everybody would have their teams be announced, and Naruto, Sakura, and Sasuke would wait for their Jonin instructor Kakashi Hatake to finally arrive. He would do so, and when he would walk in, there'd be no prank. He simply would turn to the students before saying, Meet me on the roof. You have a minute. 
Everybody would do so and Naruto would be there before even Kakashi could arrive with him wondering how, just how fast is this kid. Suddenly he would then begin asking what their goals are. Sasuke's and Sakura's would remain the same and Kakashi's explanation would as well. Naruto however would say something a bit different. He would say he wants power. That's it. Nothing more. Nothing less. His likes are fighting and fighting powerful opponents at that. His dislikes are weaklings and weak souls. As Kakashi would say, so souls? And from here, the group would be confused. Kakashi would simply proceed to poof away before telling them to meet him at some random training spot for their final test. Sakura and Sasuke would hear this wondering what that was all about. And the very next day would pop up with Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura arriving at the place about two hours before Kakashi would finally arrive. Once he would do so, he would find Naruto sleeping by a tree before waking the group up and telling them that they need to get ready for the bell test, explaining that he got lost in the path of life and he's sorry for being late. Naruto wouldn't really mind seeing as time is kind of irrelevant to him. Naruto could choose to age or not age as slowly or fast as he truly wishes to. Once he gets to a certain age, Naruto could genuinely stop his aging processes entirely, because if Naruto was to please it, He's technically part immortal. He is half Shinigami after all. And so, Naruto would look towards Kakashi's direction after he explains the rules, with him saying, come at me with the full intention to kill. Naruto, after hearing this, would think to himself that that sounds like fun. He'll finally get to fight a powerful opponent. And so, Naruto would start the battle by rushing in a Kakashi's direction, throwing a bunch of taijutsu attacks that are a lot like what a Chunin would throw. Kakashi would be quite shocked and be like, what? This kid, he's fast. And his movements are kind of refined. Way better than what I expected from some Genin. But from here, he would end up hitting Naruto away, causing Naruto to shed blood from his lips as he would lick it and say, good. This is the thrill I've been searching for. And from here, he would rush back in before weaving a bunch of hand signs and lightning style would appear on his hand. As he would shoot out a stream of electricity right at Kakashi's direction, Kakashi would think, what? It's so similar to the Chidori. And from here, Naruto would appear behind Kakashi with him saying, you said full intent to kill, right, Sensei? As he would kick him up into the air and then jump up as he summons his scythe from out of nowhere. He would then go in to try to slash at Kakashi, but it would be revealed to be nothing more than a substitution. Naruto would land on the ground with a smile on his face as he looks down and lets out a chuckle. He says, Substitution? Stop playing these jokes, Kakashi. I don't have time for this. He would then proceed to look at Kakashi and say, But I guess it can't be helped. I'll weed out the real one. He would weave two hand signs as he would then say, Multi Shadow Clone Jutsu. And from out of nowhere, a thousand clones would spawn, with Kakashi being absolutely shocked at how much chakra this young kid has. But they would then rush in and begin to, t to fight against Kakashi looking for the real one. Kakashi would create about 10 clones before tiring himself out and they would all rush at the Naruto clones. As they would all pretty much be completely outclassed and Naruto would feel this dark ominous aura coming off of Naruto, having to actually activate the Sharingan, shocking Sasuke into thinking, what? He's not a new Chiha? How does he have access to that? But Naruto doesn't care. He just wants more power, more strength, more of a challenge. He rushes in himself, just, um, pretty much causing all the Shadow Clones to go back into him as he would rush in and in a moment, Kakashi would see his life flash before his eyes as Naruto was about one inch before hitting him with a scythe, saying, you know Kakashi, you gotta be a bit more careful with your orders next time, you almost lost your life. Kakashi would fall back down as he just his eyes are widened and he's wondering how this kid could possibly move so fast and be so deadly. It's as if Naruto is death itself. Kakashi would be shocked and he would say that was that the power of the nine tails? Couldn't be. Kushina's aura was nothing like that. It was demonic. It was evil. It was death. Sasuke would come rushing in saying, what are you doing with the with the Sharingan? And Kakashi would catch Sasuke as he would bend one of his arms behind himself telling him, calm down kid, this was a gift from one of my comrades from back in the second Shinobi, third Shinobi World War. 
with Kakashi saying, so you were given the Sharingan? And Kakashi would say, I was, by an Uchiha himself. Sasuke would calm down before Sakura would then come back out and Kakashi would explain that even though that fight was definitely impressive, they failed because they failed to realize what the true objective of the mission was to work as a team. However, as Naruto said that, Naruto quite literally mimicked exactly what he was saying in real time. As he would say, I know all about that, but they'll just get in my way. I know you saw how fast I was. Those two need to level up before they can even dream of being on a team with me. As things stand, I think I'm even more powerful than you, Kakashi Sensei. So what do you say we all do each other a favor and work on teamwork later while we do our D rank missions? Kakashi would wonder how he knows about that, and Naruto would say, Oh please, spare me the antics. Let's get started and be a team already. I don't have time to waste. Kakashi would sit there, contemplating, before Naruto flares his aura up and Kakashi just kind of bends to his will. He's like, alright, I guess you pass. Saying that since now you know the objective of the mission anyways, they might as well just work on teamwork for the following weeks. They would do so for about two weeks, before Hiruzen would finally announce that they are going to be going on a C-rank mission, protecting the likes of Tazuna from the, uh, to make it to the land of the waves. Tazuna enters the room a drunken mess and when he would do so he would begin to fragrantly disrespect all of the members of team 7 before finally getting to Naruto and saying somebody like that's supposed to protect me is this some kind of joke but before he can say it he quite literally would have Naruto right in front of him with his eyes staring deep into his soul saying do you want to die old man as he whispers that into his ear and Tazuna stops everything it's as if he sobered up in that same instant. Naruto will then back up as Tazuna says, it, 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 it'll, it, it'll work. And from here, the team would meet up the bridge the very next day, all of them being excited and ready to go on with the mission, with Kakashi explaining his doubts about Naruto to Hiruzen. But Hiruzen would simply state that Naruto has been alone most of his life, so it stands to reason why he acts like that. But... Even though he thinks Naruto's a bit strange, he's never seen him kill or anything, so he doesn't know if he truly has the gut for that. So he simply waits, and as soon as the Demon Brothers with the water puddle would pretty much be around the corner, seeing as the Ganjutsu is placed and all that, when Naruto sees this and the Demon Brothers would rush in at their direction, Naruto stops both of them in an instant, flashing out his scythe as he slices both of the brothers, and in an instant, Naruto rips their souls out before they had any chance to even react. With the two demon brothers literally falling onto the ground limp and their skin pale, Kakashi would be shocked thinking to himself, that was instant death. How did he? Naruto would turn to Kakashi after saying, now those souls, they packed a little bit of a kick behind them. With Kakashi thinking to himself, did he just take their souls? What is this kid? Minato, I don't know what you did when you gave birth to this kid, but he's a little monster. A drop of sweat would go down Kakashi's face as he would say, I'm just glad he's on my team. And from here, they continue on with the mission, with Kakashi questioning Tazuna as to the true ranking of this mission. But eventually, a gigantic blade would swing through the air with immense speed. But Naruto? Naruto doesn't even react. It's as if Naruto doesn't care about the blade coming his way. Naruto would simply summon his scythe right in front of him as the blade gets completely cut in half by Naruto's scythe and Zabuza would walk out of the shadows before saying, Impressive Genin, looks like I'm going to be having my work cut out for me. But Naruto would say, You seem powerful, how about you and me go at it a few rounds, what do you say? Zabuza would let out a laugh there saying, A Genin? <laughs> I guess I'll make quick work of you, before then rushing in and going in for taijutsu type attacks. Naruto would simply follow his lead as he says, interesting, interesting, looks like you do outclass me completely in taijutsu, but let's see what happens when I amp my speed up just a bit. Suddenly, Naruto would begin taking in some of the power of the nine tails as his aura would grow an ominous purple blackish aura, think midnight aura. as as Zabuza would have no answer for this. Naruto's speed would begin to completely outclass Zabuza as he would begin to wonder what this kid even is, with him jumping back and saying that he doesn't even have his full power with him, seeing as his blade is all the way over there. 
Naruto would look at the blade of Zabuza before tossing it to him in pieces. And Zabuza would cut himself, leaving some iron to pretty much like go on the blade as it would heal itself. And Naruto would say, that's a nifty trick. Let's see what you can do with it. Immediately after this, Zabuza would swing his sword towards the direction of Naruto, who immediately would parry with his scythe. He catches it, and he would then proceed to swing it up into the air, pretty much causing Zabuza to have his blade swung away from him. It's at this moment that Naruto was about to go in for the kill and simply take Zabuza's soul, but out of nowhere, an ice barrier would be formed right before him, and none other than Haku would stand before him saying, Don't touch my master. Your battle's with me now. Naruto would think, that's one interesting ability, I can't wait to be the one who uses it. As from here, Naruto would smile, and he would then begin to pretty much begin taking uh, energy or chakra away from the Nine Tails, as he would then power himself up with his eyes changing to more of a purplish reddish aura, and Naruto would look at Haku with an ominous smile on his face as he would say, now you're gonna face the Death God. As he would spin the scythe in his hands a bunch of times like in a really cool way and then rush in with the scythe as Haku would use her, uh, his, sorry, ice crystal jutsu and as soon as the, the ice mirrors are formed, Naruto would simply think, <laughs> this is going to be easy to counter. As Naruto would weave a bunch of hand signs and out of nowhere he would create earth pillars that have sh like sharp spikes at the end of them. So the next time that Haku would teleport through one of his portals, I'm ripping this uh, page out of your book, by the way, that one weeb, he would pretty much proceed to get pierced by the earth itself. As Haku would simply stay there and cough up blood, being like, <coughs> and Naruto would have a smile on his face saying, did you really think that a jutsu as weak as this was going to be touching someone like me? He would go over to Haku as he would then proceed to say, you know, I'm part Shinigami. As Haku's eyes would widen and Naruto would say, but you didn't need to know that, did you? He would then proceed to go on to essentially like rip Haku's soul from his body. As after doing this, Naruto, like I said before, every time that he does this to his shinobi, he would gain their powers and their fighting experience. So now Naruto wields ice an ice kick again kai and so once he's done with that and zabuza at this moment would have been fighting kakashi naruto would step out as from his hands he would he would simply look at them as he thinks to himself this is quite impressive seems to me you didn't know how to use this ability he stomps one foot on the floor as the entire area would be covered with ice and he would then look at kakashi before saying it's my turn to finish this battle as from here Naruto would proceed to say, I always have wanted to dual wield, as out of nowhere from his other hand, he would create a scythe of ice that literally mirrors the one that he's holding, as he would rush in and proceed to slice Zabuza's head clean off from each side individually. Zabuza's head falls clean off of his shoulders, as Naruto just simply says, pathetic. And from here, he goes over towards Zabuza, as you know, he holds his hand out, and out of nowhere, you could just see Zabuza's soul quite literally turn physical as it shoots into Naruto's mouth. And Naruto would look down before then rising up and saying, now that's a powerful shinobi. And from here, Kakashi, as well as Team 7, would be utterly shocked, thinking to themselves, what is he? Naruto would then turn to the team before saying, come on, let's go. And in case you guys are wondering what Naruto's drip is, he essentially always rocks a black cloak, like hoodie, and a some black shinobi track pants, and like some I don't know, just just a normal shinobi outfit, just all black. Like it, it just looks really cool, basically. That said, Naruto, following this, would proceed to take Tazuna home. But for the following week and a half, seeing as Zabuza is not going to be a threat whatsoever, they pretty much just end up being sitting ducks until Tazuna eventually notices one of Gato's ships getting closer and closer. And when they would uh, set dock upon the area, Naruto would ask if he, it's okay if he handles it, with Kakashi saying why not. Naruto from here 
proceeds to essentially jump off of the very edge of the bridge and land in the middle of the boat carrying all of Gato's men. As soon as he does this, he smiles and says, Let's dance, as a massacre would begin and Naruto would begin slicing people left and right, absorbing souls, as many souls as he could possibly take in on that one day. And after, he would arrive in front of Gato before saying, Yours isn't even worth stealing. You deserve a fate far worse than death. As from here, Naruto would open, open and close his eyes would like open and close his eyes a bunch of times and out of nowhere his pupils would like turn to that of the color of the Shinigami that's part of him and the Shinigami would absorb him into him literally not letting him go anywhere like he's now trapped in the same way that Minato is for doing the seal is the same way that Gata will now be trapped forever inside of the Shinigami's belly and from here what ends up happening is the ship would finally land near the dock and Naruto would say, so you guys now have a ship with him pretty much saying that their mission is over for now. He took out the main threat as well as the thugs that were going to come after him. He thinks that that's more than enough. Tazuna would nod his head, thanking him so much, saying that the bridge will be named the great Naruto bridge. And Naruto would say, thanks. As from here, the entire team seven would return back to the leaf village. Now, when they do arrive to the Leaf Village, what ends up happening is essentially Naruto and everybody, every single person in the team would go to meet Hiruzen, and they would all pretty much get a briefing with Kakashi staying back to explain a couple of things to Hiruzen. Hiruzen, after hearing the shocking revelation, would think to himself, What? Souls? Naruto takes souls? What kind of jutsu is that? With Kakashi saying, I don't know if it is a jutsu. It's it's so strange. It's something we've never seen before. I I don't understand it. Hiruzen would look down and say, I see. And from here, we switch her perspectives back to Naruto, who was walking by a street by himself. And suddenly, we cut to him seeing Konkuro holding Kanahamaru up by the throat, saying, you got some kind of death wish, kid? Naruto hearing the word death wish, would say, who has a death wish? As he would turn to the direction of Konkuro, and Konkuro would say, butt out of this kid, this doesn't concern you. However, Naruto hearing this sort of disrespect come from Konkuro would think, huh, you're messing with the wrong guy. As he blatantly appears in front of Kunahamaru and throws, I mean, uh, and throws, uh, he appears in front of Konkuro and quite literally throws Kunahamaru out of the way. Before then proceeding to pierce Kunahamaru with his, with his, uh, with a small knife that he was able to manifest out of nowhere. The same knife that the Shinigami holds in its mouth. And Naruto would pierce it straight into, into his lung. As, you know, Konkuro was like, what? <clears throat> and he can't breathe. You know what I mean? Like his lung legit just got pierced. And so Naruto would then look towards the direction of Tamari, who's getting ready to wage an attack on him. But Naruto holds one hand up and says, die. And from here, Tamari's soul quite literally is stuck in a state where she can't move. And Konkuro is frozen in fear, saying, spare me. I, 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 I'm sorry. Gara." But before he could even finish that sentence, Naruto would rip the soul out of Konkuro's body with Gara watching. And here, he would then go on to walk in front of Tamari, as he would say, your next sweetheart. And he would rip her soul straight out of her, with Tamari being like, what? No, no. But she could only think that. She couldn't speak. Seeing all this happen in front of him, Gara's eyes widened as he would say, death. I must kill him. Death. Death! And he would rush down, teleporting in front of him with the sand. As Naruto sees this, he says, You seem pretty powerful yourself. Looks like I'm going to be taking more than just one soul. Inside of you resides two. The soul of the first of the one-tailed Jinchuriki. And yours. <laughs> this is going to be very fun. From here, Naruto would say, I say I use one of his moves. As from here, 
Naruto would slam one hand onto the ground as he says, Ice Crystal Mirror Jutsu! And from here, he plunges his body into one of the mirrors, going inside of it with, you know, with Gara being shocked, being like, where did he go? Him being in a bloodless state would just begin shooting his eyes at the mirrors, trying to break them, but nothing. Naruto would then begin shooting around in the, in the, in the, in the ice, as he would begin throwing ice senbon straight at the direction of Gara, With Gara Saiyan not being able to stop it, it begins penetrating Gara, and when Gara sees his own blood, he says, MY BLOOD! With him freaking out, because it's like, the man just saw his own blood spurt out of everywhere. Every single corner of his body is pretty much spewing out blood. Suddenly, Gara's pupils dilate, and it's revealed to be the Eye of Shukaku as he would begin his partial transformation, but Naruto's not letting this slide, he's not just about to let Gara become powerful. Instead, Naruto would jump out of one of the crystal ice mirrors before saying, DIE! And he would uh, pretty much proceed to go slice at Gara's neck, but Gara's arm, which is made out of sand, would block it and say, GET AWAY! As he smashes Naruto straight out of the ice portal, saying, I'll kill you. And from here, a huge amount of sand would go towards the direction of Naruto, beginning to surround him as Gara would say, SAND COP! But before he can finish that sentence, Naruto would snap into the state of the Shinigami himself, as he would snap out of that and say, He's still not ready to take even someone like you out? Pathetic. With him then proceeding to blitz in front of Gara and say, You're done. And from here, he would proceed to quite literally just suck this man's soul straight out, getting face to face with Gara and breathing in, just literally going <sighs> as Gara's soul travels from his own body to Naruto's. Naruto would snap back out of it as he would say, thanks, but I had that, with the Shinigami saying, no he didn't. And from here... Naruto would walk off, leaving Konkuro, Tamari, and Gara's bodies dead on the floor. The Sand Village would end up finding out about this a couple of weeks later, and after this happens, the Hidden Sand Village pretty much ends up losing it. They want to now actively declare war on the Hidden Leaf Village, and Naruto being the pretty much pure reason this happened is honestly all for it. The souls of half of the Leaf Village all of the shinobi from the sand village that sounds amazing naruto would t would begin to say that they attacked him first making up this false narrative about the hidden sand village brothers and so they end up having to actually meet up with hiruzen and the fourth kazekage meeting up with them all kind of being like okay so look we'll, we'll do this if you guys do that and what ends up happening is that the fourth Kazekage would end up saying that this is unacceptable. You know, this this is not about to just happen like this. And so what ends up happening is Hiruzen is actually told that in order for them to forgive them, he has to actively give Naruto, the one responsible for killing uh, those shinobi from his village, to him for him to personally torture and then kill. And Hiruzen, he has his hands tied. He either lets Naruto die or... A bunch of civilians will suffer and many casualties will be had. We've seen the choices that Hiruzen is willing to make when it comes to the Uchiha clan, so this is no surprise to me that he ends up choosing the lives of all of them over Naruto's. One night, Hiruzen ends up going to Naruto's place and telling him how things are. Naruto just turns himself in, saying that he'll accept punishment. And from here, what ends up happening is Naruto would be put before the Kazekage. As he smiles and says, we're even now. And from here, he would proceed to like pretty much go through with so many horrible acts of torture to Naruto. Making him not let out a single peep. No noise, no crying, no screaming, nothing. Naruto doesn't care. He's feeding off of this negativity, if anything. Naruto was loving this. But eventually, the fun would end. And Naruto would snap out of the restrainments before looking towards the direction of the fourth Kazekage, saying, You know, I killed your son quite easily. And you, you're not going to be any different. 
before then blitzing towards the direction of the Kazekage and pretty much proceeding to use his abilities to blitz at him and hit him straight through the wall. They would land on top of buildings as Naruto would stand right in front of him and he would say, you die now. As from here, he begins to pretty much use uh, a bunch of hand signs and creates like 50 shadow clones of himself to all rush in and wield the scythe. Uh, the Kazekage would use his sand to pretty much hit them all away, causing them to poof away, but that gave Naruto more than enough time to try out one of his new jutsus. He throws a small knife that he had used against Kankuro, and it would appear right beside Kazekage as he would say, You miss, brat! But Naruto would say, Did I? As he appears behind him and cuts the throat of the Kazekage straight in, like, like straight into it. And from here, he falls straight onto his knees. I believe it's Rasa, the father of Gara. Uh, correct me if I'm mistaken, guys, but I believe that's the one that he kills. And so Naruto, he then just pretty much watches as he bleeds out and says, <coughs> like he can't say anything, but he's trying to say how. Naruto would simply watch as he then goes down to his level and says, I took your son's soul. I took your ninja's soul. And now, I'm taking your soul. As he would then go on to put his hand on him and once again go. <sighs> as his soul is transferred into his body as well as all of his combat experience, Naruto was getting stronger by the day and it's only getting easier and easier for him. Naruto at this point, if he truly wanted to, could even access the powers of, the Sh of Shukaku himself because that's another soul that Naruto has access to. The powers of the One Tails. It's more than enough chakra to power him up a whole bunch. And Naruto, let's just say he's not playing any games. A couple of days would go by and the tuning exams would begin with Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura taking place in them. Sakura would begin to ask, you know, what they're going to be doing. And after Naruto killed the Kazekage of the Sand Village, um, Gara, or no, not Gara, but Orochimaru actually ended up stepping in and faking as if, you know, he was the Kazekage because he was able to witness the entire battle and everything. So he just swooped in and acted like he was the Kazekage and he took care of that kid making up some random lie. And so now the Leaf Village and the Sand Village are on shaky terms, but the Sand Village doesn't have any anybody there to represent them other than some random background shinobi so in terms of what happens next it's not really too worth covering so instead i'm just going to be talking about how lee challenges sasuke he gets folded and then they end up taking the test and going outside with anko where she be pre she begins to say that now they're going to be doing the what's it called the portion where they're going through the forest of death how could i forget that yeah the forest of death Everybody is getting pretty excited, saying that this is about to be a lot of fun. And Anko hearing this would say, fun? <laughs> she throws a kunai at the people saying that and says that your lives are on the line. As she smiles and hands out waivers saying that they need to sign this to participate, saying that many of them, they will die. But that's a sacrifice they're willing to make. And from here, all of the teams were dispersed within the forest, with Naruto saying, I gotta go take a leak. Watch out for Sakura, Sasuke. We don't want her dying too soon. With him then proceeding to go off, take a leak, and no code was actually given this time because Sasuke doesn't even think of Naruto as a dope. He just genuinely gets the freaks from Naruto. He is genuinely terrified of him. He gives him that same aura of death that Itachi gave him the night of the incident. And that's something that terrifies Sasuke to his core. He doesn't want to mess with Naruto in any way, shape, or form. And so, he simply just does what he's told. Eventually, Orochimaru arrives and everything that happens like canon ends up going down. Except this time, when the snake appears, Naruto was able to jump over it and then come down with his fist, smashing it right down at the snake's head. Saying, you know it's not fun to try to eat people where they're trying to use do their... Make uh, do their business with the snake legit laying there with its head cru crushed. Naruto would then appear as he would see Orochimaru about to like pretty much bite or kiss Sasuke's neck, but Naruto comes in with a swooping kick, deflecting it, being like, Hey, yo, 
What are you trying to do? You trying to kiss my man's neck? No, I'm just playing. But he would kick Orochimaru's neck. And Orochimaru would retract his neck back as he would say, Damn, kid, that hurt. From here, he would say, It's you. You killed the fourth Kazekage. You know, I have to thank you. With Naruto saying, What's there to thank you, creepy old geezer? With Orochimaru saying, Oh, trust me. You'll understand in due time. As from here, he takes off the mask, revealing to be Orochimaru himself. And Naruto would say, You know, I've read about you somewhere. Orochimaru, one of the legendary Sanin. It's going to be fun tearing you a new one. <laughs> Taking your soul? That's going to be the biggest catch I've gotten yet. Naruto simply would stare at Orochimaru. And Orochimaru from here would say, This boy. He definitely has power. But as he's thinking this, Sand would literally leap from behind Orochimaru. As it would grab him by his feet, Orochimaru would look down at an instant before he then immediately swipes the sand away. But as he does that, Naruto would have already appeared right in front of him and would be ready to use his scythe to slash at Orochimaru's chest, sending Orochimaru flying back as his entire chest gets opened. Orochimaru having this happen to him would cough out blood and say, <laughs> What? When did you? But before he can even finish the sentence, his body would hit the tree as Orochimaru would open his mouth and regurgitate himself as a whole new person. He would then look at Naruto and say, So you like using weapons, huh? He opens his mouth once again and reveals the Kusanagi blade. And from here, Naruto smiles, saying, Interesting. As he would proceed to pretty much hold both hands out in an X formation and create two long sword style versions of the sand blades that Haku once used. As he would then rush in at Orochimaru and dual wield fight against Orochimaru. Now keep in mind, this version of Naruto is not no sl no 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 slouch when it comes to using a sword. He has the experience and the know-how that Zabuza had, seeing as he stole his soul. He also has the experience that Haku gained. He has the experience of Rasa and Gara. Just put that all together and you create an absolute monster. He rushes in at Orochimaru, who at first would try to use his blade to outplay Naruto, trying to think that he has more experience than him, but it's as if this Genin has had years of lifetimes of experience when it comes to using the sword. It's, it's incredible. Orochimaru is shocked at this. He doesn't know how to react. I mean, what is he supposed to do? But suddenly, out of nowhere, a thick fog would envelop the area, or I guess you could say, a mist. As Orochimaru begins to have his senses get dulled out a bit, but Orochimaru would simply say, enough, as he would use a wind style jutsu to blast all of the fog out of the way. But as he's doing this, Naruto would be rushing in his direction once more, and he would hit Orochimaru square in the jaw, sending him flying into a tree, appearing right behind him, kicking him up into the air, as from here, he would proceed to use his sand abilities to like pretty much... um have a huge two huge pillars of sand come in in the air and crush Orochimaru between them as Orochimaru was like wait what and he would pretty much end up hitting the ground with a thud as Naruto lands right beside him and he takes out his scythe saying now you will face judgment holding his scythe in a reverse script style but before Naruto can do anything Orochimaru would simply think two things he has to get out of there now and so orochimaru would reverse summon himself by summoning manda and manda would appear right in front of orochimaru as he would say how dare you summon me but at that same moment naruto would come rushing in and pretty much make physical contact with manda as orochimaru reverse summons himself back into the snake mountain and once he does this, Manda would look at Orochimaru as he says how dare he summon him and, and enter their plane of existence. But lo and behold, Naruto went straight with him. And when Naruto sees Orochimaru, he says, excuse me, snake, as he hits the snake away and then a smile appears on his face as he straight up proceeds to wipe this man from existence. I mean, his body's still there, but he sucks his soul straight out of there. Like... This man's soul is never coming back. And seeing as he can't exactly just jump to another body now that his body is pretty much just a shell, he's pretty much dead. 
Now, this is going to have a lot of repercussions on the next couple of arcs that would have happened in the series. But before that, I have to cover other things. Like, what happens once Naruto realizes that he is surrounded by tons and tons of snakes? Naruto seeing this would think to himself, So, where am I? As the giant, the biggest, the leader, would say, You're in the, you're in the snake cave. Leave now. And a bunch of snakes would appear behind Naruto and he would pretty much be surrounded by them. With him saying, how dare you threaten the, the god of death. As from here, he proceeds to pretty much weave hand signs that would cause the earth to turn into sand and then just wrap around each of the snakes. Like creating these domes that they just could not get out of. Before he then freezes them and adds another layer of protection on top of that and tells the main leader that if he doesn't want all of these snakes to die that he'll teach him his secrets because now that he took Orochimaru's body he understands exactly where he is and the snake would pretty much have no choice he's pretty much being held at blackmail you know what I mean and so what ends up happening is they end up having to teach Naruto snake sage mode and yeah he proceeds to ask to be trained and is told no but he ends up having to be trained because they can't help it. And so he ends up learning snake sage mode over the next month. Instead of being with team seven and participating in the final battles or even having his one month training period, he instead instantly just ends up starting to train and misses that entire portion of the tuning exams, meaning he got kicked out of it. And he would have also used the multi shadow clone jutsu to actually learn snake sage mode way faster than he would have if he didn't do that he would reverse summon himself back to the leaf village after learning it and return back these snakes to how they normally would be without his restraints there when he arrives he would actually arrive just in time for the tuning exams where nothing happens keep in mind orochimaru is now dead so with orochimaru dead rasa is not there to tell everybody that oh we have to do the attack in the leaf village and even if that wasn't the case, Gara wouldn't be there to be one of the main focuses. By leaving the Chichiriki there, nothing nothing would have happened. So, yeah, no Leaf Village destruction, no Tsunade needed. Naruto still hasn't met Jiraiya, no cleanup. Orochimaru doesn't actually even end up going after Sasuke. So... A lot of things are generally avoided by everything that Naruto just pulled. And with Orochimaru straight up having died, Neji is pretty much just concluded as the winner, seeing as this version of Sasuke has no chance against this Neji. Keep in mind, this Sasuke didn't even get to activate his Sharingan against Haku, so that's not happening. He was a lot weaker when he fought against Lee, and he's going to be a lot weaker when he fights against Neji. Who, realistically speaking, I personally believe that if Sasuke and Neji were to both have fought in the tuning exams, I think that l that Neji would easily stop Sasuke. I mean, that is if we're not taking his curse mark into account. If Sasuke was to activate his curse mark, then that battle could potentially go either way. But I still have Neji winning that fight, seeing as he was already outclassing. I mean, I mean, he was pretty much beating Naruto. And Naruto was clapping the cheeks of Gara, who Sasuke stood no chance against. Granted, I don't think he used the curse mark, but I mean, I doubt he would even be able to pull it out in the tuning exam. So I think Sasuke would lose this battle for sure. And yeah, that's pretty much how the tuning exams actually ends up going. After this, there are no real arcs that I have to cover, seeing as the next Tsunade Retrieval arc is pretty much just destroyed. And the uh, Sound 4, they don't even end up trying to kidnap Sasuke without a leader they have no orders and so what do they do other than just hope that Orochimaru returns y'all eventually end up realizing that yeah this man's definitely dead after Orochimaru doesn't real uh return after a while and so Naruto essentially is left with nothing to do nothing interesting is happening in the leaf village and he simply would go on from on missions for the next couple of months before then realizing that this is no fun anymore He's bored. He decides to tell Lord Hiruzen that he's going to be going on a three year training journey. However, before that it can happen, and Naruto can even, you know, pretty much end up pitching his idea out, Jiraiya 
one of the legendary Sonnies would enter the room and tell Hiruzen that he has to talk to him about something. But this is when Hiruzen and Jiraiya would both just look at Naruto who was standing right in the middle with Jiraiya introducing himself saying, Oh, you must be Naruto. I've been wanting to meet you. Um, what do you say me and you go out, go outside and have a chat? chat? But Naruto turns to Jiraiya and says, I don't feel like chatting with someone like you. Get lost, old man. But Jiraiya is just an utter shocked. And Naruto would then tell Hiruzen that he's going to be going off for three years to train. With Jiraiya saying, why don't you just train with me, kid? I am your godfather, after all. Naruto would turn to Jiraiya and say, can you butt out? Nobody asked what you were. As, you know, Jiraiya is just like, Jesus, this kid is cold. And after Naruto ends up leaving, Jiraiya follows behind him, saying that he could offer a lot of, you know, useful training for him. But Naruto would simply look at Jiraiya and say, useful training, you say. What useful training could somebody like you possibly offer me? You're even weaker than Orochimaru, and I single-handedly killed him. And after hearing this, Jiraiya is just shocked. He's like, what did you just say you did? But Naruto would turn to Jiraiya and say, you heard me, as he opens and closes his eyes revealing snake sage mode, and then looks at the direction of Jiraiya saying, What? You, you truly must have killed Orochimaru. He's one of the only people to have known where to find that snake cave. With Naruto saying that, that's right, he got rid of that problem, seeing as he was intervening with the Chunin exams. And Jirai would say that he could still teach him other things, such as this. He ends up revealing the Rasengan, with Naruto saying that that's a nifty trick. He'll definitely have to end up uh, learning how to do that someday, but he should. He would ask Jiraiya what exactly the requirements are for the Jutsu, and Jiraiya would say, oh, it's molding chakra and spinning it really fast. Naruto would then look at him and say, is that right? Something like this? Before he then replicates the same exact jutsu using all of Orochimaru's jutsu know-how as well as the experience from all the other ninjas whose souls he sucked, he would end up creating a perfect Rasengan right in front of Jiraiya. With Jiraiya just dropping his jaw being like, how did you? But Naruto would say, is that it then? Because if it is, then I gotta go. I have more important matters to attend to. Jiraiya would be an utter just disbelief he's like uh, 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 uh and naruto just packs his bags and ends up dipping the village for the next three years now i would end up explaining what happens during these three years but here's the short and summarized version of it essentially naruto goes on a travel journey where he ends up fighting a bunch of powerful opponents and going throughout lands pretty much searching out powerful shinobi and anytime that he would be disappointed in their performance he sucks their souls out and adds their experience to his repertoire, making him more powerful as the days go by. With his aging growing more and more by the day and himself doing his own personal training with using his own new abilities that end up, um, you know, pretty much being a uh, heightened and stronger, I guess you could say, Naruto just becomes a completely different beast. This man is just unstoppable. Like this man is insane. Let, let me just put it that way. This man is insane. And uh, another thing that I definitely should probably mention, Naruto quite literally no diffs the Akatsuki off screen. You guys remember when Hashirama off screen, uh, uh, I mean, Madara off screen Hashirama, like that was like the really hyped up fight by Kishimoto and he just like off screened him. That's pretty much what Naruto does to the Akatsuki. One of the first two Akatsuki members that he runs into would be that of K Kakazu and Hidan. And after Naruto ends up pretty much slaughtering the both of them and realizing Hidan can't be killed to damage, he sucks the man's soul away and takes his immortality. So now Naruto is immortal and that smells doom for everybody. Naruto already had his lifespan increased a whole bunch by the fact that he is part Shinigami. But now the man is literally immortal, so he's literally a god now. And with him killing Kakazu, he ends up gaining his powers and experience as well, making him even more busted than he already was. How do you get more busted than that? I like like I don't understand how anybody from here on would be able to possibly defeat anyone 
in, 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 I mean, I mean, I don't see how anybody could possibly defeat Naruto, sorry, like, there's just no way. Morikatsuki members eventually end up being thrown at Naruto's way, and he just obliterates them. I'm sorry, but he just destroys them. This version of Naruto was by myself made way too powerful for no reason, and I genuinely should have, like, held back with a lot of the powers that I gave him. He literally has the ability to rip out souls like Nagato, which is a one-shot kill move. He has one of the most powerful legendary weapons of all time, a Shinigami's Death Scythe. He has abilities to teleport now because he has the abilities of the Flying Raishin. He has the Multi-Shadow Clone Jutsu, Immortality, Kakuzu's powers. With him off-screening the Akatsuki members, he now has the Rinnegan and Sharingan's abilities, Kamui. He has Suki Yomi. I the list goes on and on and on of all the things that Naruto essentially ends up gaining throughout these three years. And when he returns to the Hidden Leaf Village, he is a full-on Reaper. Nobody will stand in this man's way. And seeing as I could genuinely just end it here with Naruto being like super OP and ending it off as a really, really, really fan ficky what if, I'm gonna be leaving you guys with one last battle before I dip and go like eat some Chick-fil-A or something. But uh let's see, who's a good opponent that I could have Naruto fight just to just to kind of like wank this man, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, perfect. Toneri. Toneri ends up eventually coming back down to the Leaf Village. Where Naruto lives, mind you. And attacks Hinata. Um, the, the village, now seeing that they pretty much ended up taking Hinata, would end up informing Naruto and asking him to do the mission for them for a high amount of money. And the person in particular who assigns this mission to him would be Hiyashi Hyuka, under the authority of Hiruzen. Now, when this happens... Naruto decides, all right, fine. Looks like I'll have to end up uh, taking out this uh, Toneri fellow, right? Now, from here, the rest of the Kages are like, yeah, like, we have to destroy him. Like, we have to use this insanely powerful cannon that, you know, the Raikage has. But Hiruzen tells him to wait. And so he does. And what ends up going down is Naruto ends up finding the same path that they would have found in the last movie, arriving in front of Toneri. And the second that Toneri was like, I have the Tensei Gun. Naruto just looks at him and says, Bro, I have the Rene Gun and the Sharing Gun. Now, I have the Rene Sharing Gun. He activates a Rene Sharing Gun in both eyes and then proceeds to blitz at the direction of Toneri. And Toneri goes in to throw like a moon crushing punch in his direction, but it just phases through him. And Naruto says, GG's as chains that he like magically takes out of nowhere like well not magically chains that he's able to create using his Shinigami half powers wrap around Toneri's neck as Naruto drags Toneri across the entirety of the moon and this man gets absolutely mollywhopped Toneri gets literally dragged across the entire moon with him just getting ragdolled by Naruto until eventually he swings him up into the air in Ghost Rider fashion before smashing him straight clean into the entire center of the moon, causing the entire moon to almost explode from the impact. And uh, after that, Naruto just lands in front of Toneri as he sucks the man's soul, who's literally part of Tatsuki, and just takes the Tensei Gun. Now he has Tensei Gon abilities, like the Tensei Gon, like a uh, QB avatar thingy majigger. He has access to that. One more thing that Naruto has perfect access to is Kurama's Chakra. So you you don't get any more powerful than this. And I am so sorry to any Boruto tards out there who think, oh, what about Ishiki? What about Ishiki? No, he's not doing anything to this Naruto. Nobody is touching this god of death-like creature. Momoshiki, forget about it. <laughs> it's not happening. Naruto literally goes on to live on forever, becomes immortal, mollywops everybody. The series is done. Bing, bang, boom. I'm a dip. Bye.